thank you so much for being here today. I'm so excited to talk with you. Thank you for having me. Yes. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your background for people who are not already familiar, but also how you got your start in adult. I basically grew up in a town where everybody was fucking. <laughs> and I okay. wanted to fuck too, but I didn't want to get beat up or like take someone's boyfriend or like their their relationships didn't make sense for the sex that they were having in my brain. So when I got approached by a porn um, agent, I was like, I would like to have some sex. Yes, I want to have a blowjob. I want to have Fabio sex, you know, wind in the hair type of thing. And this is like Hogwarts for porn. Like if you go for sex, if you go into porn, that's how you learn. So I thought porn was a great way to learn how to have some sex. <laughs> Wait, how old were you at this point? 22. Okay. Yeah, so I, I've had, I had had some sex, but it wasn't good and I didn't know what I was doing. I just felt like, clumsy with sex and I was like no this is not good I need to <laughs> I need to like live life in like a better way and like if I can't learn how to do a blowjob then <laughs> was it mostly relationship sex that you were having or was it like dating um, what? even in my relationship sex I don't think any of it was like too serious for like how young I was at the time. I don't think anyone was really trying to like romance the stone you know like they were just <laughs> just sticking it in and like yay and I was like uh yay like it didn't feel like it didn't feel like this is this is the sex like there was no orgasms you know for okay. me for me okay. <laughs> so I got into porn to like learn some stuff so you started having orgasms then whenever you got into porn I learned how to have orgasms okay. and choosing if I wanted to have it or not like there's not every day where I'm like you you don't deserve it but I know I could you know yeah. so I learned how to have it um, have them when I wanted them and like to control my orgasms and just just have a better overall sexual experience So elusive. Yeah, <laughs> do you wait? So is there a way for you then to withhold your orgasm? You 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 have enough like uh, What is it like fitness? <laughs> vaginal <laughs> fitness down there to... <laughs> I, I think there's a way to kind of control it like you can do other things like if I know that this is gonna create an orgasm I can like be like, let's do something else until I'm ready for like the finale, you know? Like yeah. let's, cause I like playing with people. Like there's so much to a whole person that I want to explore. I'm not trying to like immediately like make them or I bust a nut unless that's the circumstance. Uh -huh. But for the most part, I'm trying to explore. So I kind of like will hold the orgasm um, till later or sometimes it's not even necessary. Like, you know, like yeah. sometimes you're just having a good time and you don't need to just flutter. <laughs> okay, okay. So let's go back a little bit further okay. then to young Anna. Yeah. <laughs> what was young Anna like? Uh, I have a lot of siblings, but I was really close with my brothers. So I was very competitive. And I think being that close with different men of different ages and observing them made me not grow up liking men. <laughs> like, okay. Just because okay. they're my brothers. So I'm like, you're fucking gross. You know, like, my brother wants to date girls and he's picking his boogers and wiping them on his wall. Like, that's <laughs> gross. So I just like saw the raw men in their natural habitat. And I just was competitive. Like I liked doing every sport. I would go fishing. I would race them up and down the street. If I could beat my brothers and make them cry, I had a good day. So that brought me joy when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a little bit of that competitive streak then because you had, I'm assuming these were older brothers? I have one younger brother and then two older brothers and then five older siblings. So I'm like on wow. the younger side for yeah. sure. So of course, you know, when you're like the younger sibling, you just like, you want to get out there and like, I can do that too. I can do that too. So yeah. I would do that and then make them cry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So was there like preferential treatment then from your parents with you because you were a female amongst all of these gruff boys? Uh, annoyingly, there was that, this is what girls do. This is what boys do. Okay. And when I was really little, it was fine because I'm like literally glitter is amazing so but, <laughs> but when you get older and like oh like I can do something better than them and like you're stopped from doing it because you're a girl it started to kind of like like piss me off and like be like what I shouldn't I shouldn't be made to fold napkins while they can go fishing you know so that made me even more competitive in a way uh, like not being allowed to do all those things and then 
our family was really close and really religious. So like my first time seeing porn, I didn't think it was real. I was like, wow, that's unique. Because <laughs> you are, I think, a millennial like me. Yeah. <laughs> so under what context was it that you saw, you were first exposed to? It's, after... it's not like pop unders these days or anything it's not, like that. It was not Instagram. <laughs> right? It's definitely not Instagram. It's, it was like right after the computers turned from being a black screen with the green words, and yeah. like dial up. So there had to be dial up and then like, kind of like greedy picture and you're like, I think that's a vagina. And it's, it's all doing pixelated. Stuff. Yeah, it's a pixelated <laughs> vagina. Of course, there were like Playboy magazines, and like I didn't consider that porn. I just was like, oh, that's what pretty ladies look like. I was just like, pretty lady, yeah. But <laughs> but the porn didn't seem like pretty lady. Yeah, it was just like you know, vagina, uh, pixelated, and something's happening, and you're like, not so much artistic. No, then. no, yeah. and not really wanting you to watch more. Like I think like. Like now, like uh, the top porn stars are like Angela White. Like back then, it was like two girls, one cup. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. Back. wow. Yeah. So you That's don't want. Yeah, I know. So there's no incentive to really watch it. So I wasn't very like sexual, other than like observing sexual people. Okay. You know, like your parents are always like, "Don't have sex." I wasn't thinking about that. Yeah. Well, now I am because you said that. What is this sex? What is this mystery sex that you're talking yeah. about? Have it. Okay, so what was the scope then of your sexual education? Did it come from your parents or was it friends or <laughs> what was that like? I feel like it came from like parents and like school and friends, but it was all like not what I was trying to understand. You know, like they're like, parents say don't have it. Church says don't have it until you get married or else you're a whore. Friends say I did it. It was weird. So I was like, wow, you guys, <laughs> woohoo, I can't wait to have some of this sex. But you know, like at some point you're going to engage in it. So I was just like really trying to find like, okay, like I know don't like fuck somebody that I don't give a fuck about. But like, what if I do? Like, how do, yeah. <laughs> how do I fuck somebody I don't give a fuck about? <laughs> so I just really wanted like firsthand experience, but there was no way for me to do it like in my in my lifestyle at the time like I was in college boys were still fucking annoying to me <laughs> I okay. could beat them I was smarter than them so I was just like oh I don't want to fuck a slow dumb guy you know Man, like, it, growing <laughs> up with brothers really I mean that was like embedded in yeah, you then yeah that perception of yeah because okay. like my dad was my dad's like the dad like he's the dad has my mom who's the wife so like he did it but like you guys my brothers weren't even close to like the things that my dad was capable of doing. Like my dad would do this and that and the other and just like never complain. And my brother's like, uh -huh, I don't know how to brush my teeth. I'm like, oh, oh. you know, like, so their <laughs> friends are not, <laughs> I don't want to fuck your friends. So um, in a way, like porn was like, thank you God for like, thank you for giving me nameless dicks I don't have to care about for yeah. me to practice and they could use me for practice. <laughs> it was almost like a refreshing perspective. A mutual like, understanding of like, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. How that played a role. Um, so segueing into a completely different topic, but um, so I first became really aware, hyper aware of you um, <laughs> whenever you did a Playboy, you put together the first all black production, yeah. a photo set for Misty Stone. Yes. So can you tell me a little bit about how that opportunity came about and yeah, what, what led up to that? Well, I had my relationship with Holly Ruprick and um, I met her when she worked for Hustler. So I don't know what in the world <laughs> made her like me, <laughs> but from from day one, she was like, you're stunning, you're amazing. And it's like, it's refreshing to hear from someone in the industry, because you get compliments all the time, but like yeah. the way Holly compliments you is like on another level. So she kind of like brought up my confidence and stuff, and then um, immediately suggested that I work for Playboy when she became a part of the team. Um, and then when I got my first like, this is your shoot. I was looking through and they're like, are you comfortable with this? And I was like, no, what the fuck? Like, I know I'm buff, but I don't work out. So they had like, they had things that weren't related to me whatsoever. Um, and then like the outfits were just pretty basic. And I was just like, I can, you can do basic, but better, you know? So I had a lot of input. 
she respected my word with that and then really wanted me to produce since I did so well on my set. And then the first girl I could think of was like, who's who's been here before me? Who's iconic? Who's a household name? Misty fucking Stone. Yeah. <laughs> like, she smells good. She's stunning. She's great. She smells good. She does. <laughs> <laughs> I love sniffing her. <laughs> but she's just like, she's just, she's Misty, you know, like everybody knows her. Um, and it was kind of an accident that I put the f- all black production team together. I didn't set out to do that. I just, at the time, who was the best photographer I knew, my uh, my friend JT at the time, and then I had got recommended at, like people that were good. So it just turned out that everybody was black and I didn't even notice it until they were like, did you know that this is the all, all black team? And I was like, oh shit. Oh. <laughs> It's, okay, so th- these didn't necessarily come from, like, people requesting, hey, you know, Mm-mm. we want you to, we want we want this person on this team. It was yeah. purely just, like, an organic It was 100% thing. organic. Like, okay. I intentionally used Misty because she's a beautiful black model. But moving uh, outside of her, like, the race of everybody just yeah. happened to be black. So it was, like awesome to like work in that space and then I never knew that they didn't have a all-black production team before that because I was like how long has the company been around and you've never put (laughs) black people together to shoot black people like you know it just makes more sense it just made sense to me so it was shocking that it hadn't happened yet so so they gave you full creative freedom then um which is amazing yeah but what was the what was the perception or what was the feedback that you got whenever they saw okay this is who she's assembled because i'm assuming that this needs to be you know kind of yeah okay in advance (laughs) so yeah what was the reaction to that i got everybody like approved before we worked together um and then i think because misty's shoot was my first shoot of course it it was good but like i had things that i needed to learn about so like they are brutally honest which i was like thankful for because if they weren't then i would have just been like oh yay that that was good so they were really honest with what i needed to work on and what i needed to improve and like with each step i've taken their criticism constructively and like applied Mm -hmm. it so uh i just used jt again on my last um playboy shoot which we just shot a month ago and like the, the, from the first shoot to the last one is is like, oh, look, we've grown so much. <laughs> I'm a big kid now. <laughs> okay, well, and that's important then that you were already familiar with people, you trusted them, and mo- mo- I think more importantly, like you trusted yeah. their feedback. A hundred percent. I knew that the people that I chose would understand what I needed from them and then also listen to what they needed from them. So I knew that they were great people to work with. And I feel like that across the board, anybody that I work with, I'm like, you guys are good. You guys are good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I think the maybe for just me reading that and reading this really amazing um, article that came from that, that was published, I saw it in ABN, but I'm sure it was elsewhere too. Um, it almost seemed like it maybe was an intentional move mm-hmm. um, just the way that it was kind of like publicized yeah but at the sa- <laughs> which is you know that's still great but at the same time like yeah it is a little bit shocking that that was like the first mm-hmm. time that they I had wish I almost wish it was more intentional so I could be like yeah <laughs> uh-huh <laughs> well and so cut to cut to like you know we have Um, 2020 happened and the Black Lives Matter movement really, really started to um, come to the forefront of, I think, a lot. Yeah, there you go, drink. (laughs) Actually, I'm going to drink with you. I know where you're going. Cheers. (laughs) Cheers. Okay. (laughs) Became the forefront of of many conversations, including people that really hadn't had those types of conversations before. So I think we saw coming out of that a lot of conversations which I know you were also very outspoken about (laughs) um, like within these town halls and such where saying essentially like some of the issues that particularly people of color but particularly black performers face Mm -hmm. even within adult yeah so do you think that the intentionality since that time to push black performers to the forefront has been sincere? What What is your perception, I guess, um, mm, particularly I for it. the adult response coming out of that time? <laughs> I love this industry, and I, I, I don't think I ever really set out to be an advocate. It's just something that 
like happened because I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, you just yeah. see things. It's almost like seeing a bully, like an unintentional bully. And you're like, hey, maybe stop like doing that. And they're like, meh. So I saw all of these things, started speaking up. And then like the reaction from certain certain big groups within the industry. Like we had a Zoom call, a bunch of black performers had a Zoom call with like mm-hmm. our Grammys. And their re- response to us telling them our feelings was they're being attacked. And I was just like, you guys, like it's not an attack if somebody's like hurting or doesn't feel heard or represented or feel equal or feel like there's space for them. You know, like if you could just listen and create the space. So. I feel like a lot of companies are performative with their response to how they're choosing and moving regarding black talent. Like the choice and the decision to pick certain people and align them where they are. I'm like, I think you chose that person because they're black in your eyes and they might not say anything. So you chose a safe black performer to head. Like after 2020, they certain companies are like, oh, whoa, we got a black girl here and a black girl here. But like those yeah. ones there, I'm like, but that's all you did. You know, like that's yeah. all you did was put a, a black person on a pedestal and be like, look, we have one, we're good. But they haven't done anything further. And I would use holidays as like an example, like, You guys, like, St. Patrick's Day, like, you guys put all these, like, find all, go find redheads from different countries even to put them in shit and, like, green outfits and have them have beer. I'm like, you do know people are, not only white presenting people are Irish, right? Like, I'm 27% Irish, no one would know. But, like, (laughs) things like that, I'm like, the way that you, like, keep forcing titles on people, like, it doesn't allow them a place to grow because, like, if you only have this for that and that for that, then that's all they'll ever be. Like just just the yeah. token, you know? Like if you only have them being in the token and don't allow their feedback to change your company or like, or maybe, I don't know, maybe they don't have anything to say to help those companies. But every year I'm on Twitter making sure that everybody knows like what you could be doing better. And it's never really perceived in a good way. Like they're never, like they're angry. <laughs> they're, yeah. they're angry that I'm telling them that they, they're lacking in, in a space instead of um, fixing it. But I, I have um, I have feelings that companies are gonna try to do better and things like that. But it's like, if you feel uncomfortable, you should feel more uncomfortable. You know, like if it's uncomfortable for you now, then imagine how we feel, you yeah. know? Like there was only one all black feature last year and it was shot the year before that. So there's been no all black people on set in two years in the industry and they're like, Yeah. Okay. So with that, then, do you think that even though maybe your first, your directorial debut Mm -hmm. was not necessarily intentional, that Mm -hmm. maybe that is something that should be incorporated, not even necessarily all on you, but, you know, um, from our community in general. And it doesn't necessarily need to be, you know, a person of color behind the scenes initiating that. I think there should be that for like all kind of like racial groups, you know, like, Cause sometimes I'll see other things and I'm like, was she comfortable with portraying this type of version of herself because this is what porn wants? Like, yeah. do you really want to be that stereotypical porn? Like, you know, are you comfortable with that? Even like with non POC, like, are you comfortable with portraying like interracial in that manner? Is that what you came here for? You know, like, yeah. and you you won't have anybody asking those are you comfortable questions if they're not in your position and like getting more people of color or just their input alone yeah. could help, you know, just to make things a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. So how then can companies, maybe they do really genuinely want to try mm-hmm. and get to a better um, ethical place right. or inclusive place, mm-hmm. especially. So in your opinion, like, how do you think, you, you mentioned that having more people of color behind the scenes and, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. I think 100% diversifying sets, like, would help. Like, you don't, like, necessarily, like, if you're shooting a black person, have to have all black set, but, like, have a black person's input besides the talent, you know, or, like, a liaison or something. Or even, like, I've I've noticed just adding women, and, like, I don't know, I feel way more comfortable on queer sets. Like, there's, like, an unspoken thing that, like, like, everybody kind of gets it. Like, we don't have to 
talk about certain things on those type of sets but when like the set is dominated by men <laughs> usually straight white men like it's a little they're like hey like the, like there was a, a director that was like yeah let's just do that like uh, i'm gonna say it wrong but he go like the like asian oh, like yeah. they're like yeah just do that face, face. and i was like no and she shouldn't do it like the other girl was like i'm cool i was like no 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 yeah no one should be doing that but because this is a dude and he's just like yeah hey, what's the problem you know like right yeah because <laughs> there is so much nuance in that and it's not like people are necessarily doing these things intentionally but right. it's like it's an ignorance that they don't understand right and if they're yeah. being encouraged to do it by other people that are also ignorant then it's just a whole big old it's a big old trend now like there's yeah. companies that like literally have it all over the trailers and stuff like that and they're like this is our brand oh, oh, oh. yeah <laughs> they didn't consult anybody nope. before they 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 did that one yeah yeah <laughs> wow okay let's talk a little bit about your friendships and the importance of friendships you know being an adult performer and in this industry yeah do you have a good support group behind you you know uh I do. I feel like I always do, and it's not until um, something shakes it that I realize like who's actually in my corner. Um, I have a therapist. Thank you to Pineapple Support, uh-huh. um, <laughs> and she has told me that I give too much of a fuck about people. Like she's really? like, you care so much about people that you're willing to give them everything, but that person that you care about hasn't given you like a grain of salt yet. You know, and like like empathy, or know? just like in any in any like just like the energy or the effort that you put uh, towards relationships like aren't reciprocated. So I realized that that was like a problem with myself. Like I would see people that I thought were great, you're amazing. Oh my god, look at you, you're hot. Like you're great, but like it's almost like don't meet your heroes. Like not everybody who's stunning and amazing is is a good person. And um, I was a loyal friend to a lot of not good people. And I think if I had never had those relationships, um, I wouldn't have the ones that I have now. And I, I'm like really thankful for my friends that are able to just be real because the industry is hard, life is hard. So it's not always roses in a relationship. So if, if we can fight or like just hate each other's guts and then come back and be like, hey bitch, <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, I actually really love your wig. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, a lot of my friends, a lot of my support system, like they love the shit out of me. And like, I sometimes question if they love me more than me. So it, I'm like in a nice place now with the people around me that like, they show me that they love me. They show me that they care. And they actually like elevate me in, in ways of my life. Like they make sure that I'm doing something. If they have a project, they put my name in the box. Um, even my partner like is like, I got you. Like he, he, putting out ideas, like give, like putting outfits, like you should wear this to this award show. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I should. <laughs> so, you know, everybody that I have, that's my system, um, you know, elevates my life in a great way. And I think it, it extends further than just people that I think are my friends. Cause like, you know, like I feel like you're my friend too, mm-hmm. you know, but you might not be like, my best friend but like you're still a friend so like it's like from my best friend all the way down to like somebody I just met yesterday like yeah there's a little bit of give and take you know you try to support each other I think yeah is what I'm getting from that a hundred percent and wherever you can wherever you can and like not giving too much energy to people that aren't giving it back so just kind of focusing on the people that are like right in front of me (laughs) it's It's difficult to have friends in this industry because I know for me anyways um you know it it tends to be a little bit fleeting sometimes because there comes a point in time where you feel like maybe people sometimes they just want something from you you know and you have to kind of (laughs) feel like okay you know this is maybe more of a like a transactional relationship and this is you know you have to categorize yeah. accordingly. It, it is kind of hard to make a genuine friendship because I think it's really easy to be a transactional friend in the industry especially like if you're content collabing like all you got to do is like oh can we fuck and then like you fuck and then you did like so it's yeah. not really like a relationship it's transactional for sure. I think sex work like makes you give consent so like you can kind of like consent to be someone's friend like if you don't want to be someone's friend it's kind of it's easier for me to like break away from relationships here because 
I have to focus on other things. You kind of like allow all your close good friends in your circle and you guys are like doing your thing over here. And like, if you don't mess with those people over there, then you don't even have to like cross paths until AVN. <laughs> oh, so, I feel like this is getting oddly specific. Um, okay, so there's ebbs and flows. Yeah, then, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to shout out, um, you know, someone who's maybe been just a really good support person for you right now? Yes, I my bestest friend in the whole wide world right now is Miss Natasia Dreams. Like yeah. she is stunning. She's iconic. She's been my friend since the first day I met her at the Kink Armory, and she was just like, "Hi, girl," and I was like, "Hey." <laughs> <laughs> she's just been like a sweetheart, like throughout everything, thick and thin. She's just like, she's been like somebody that I admire and she also admires me which I think is crazy because like her cheekbones are just oh it <laughs> doesn't make sense so the gods. yeah she's yeah. literally like to me she's just like a chiseled goddess so like okay. I, to have a goddess as your <laughs> friend I just I just think that's that's like I'm good I'm fine <laughs> yeah. well thank you so much for taking the time to sit and for me to get to know you a little bit better and all of us to get to know you a little bit better and bringing the energy as always. Thank you. Anna Fox. Thank you for having me, Vendetta. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>